Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and in this quick video I am going to go over some Lightroom editing. A lot of you guys want to try to get some more out of your photos, and I'm just going to show you how to do that and using Adobe Lightroom. It's a fairly easy program um, once you get used to using it, but when you first get it, it might be a little overwhelming, so I'm just going to show you a couple quick tips, you know, to just get through and just enhance your photos that little bit. Now, this video will apply to both RAW files and JPEGs, but I'm gonna be working with Sony RAW files in particular, but it's irrelevant what camera you're using. Now, RAW files will get you a little bit more latitude in the editing department. You'll be able to push the colors and the highlights a little bit more before like things like banding and stuff like that come in. So keep that in mind. That's one huge advantage to shooting RAW, especially dynamic range, as you will see in this quick video. So let's get going with it, all right? so this first image I'm going to edit and show you how to enhance is a photo of a dog. So I know a lot of people like to take pictures of, of their pets and things like that. And I'll just show you a couple quick tips here to, you know, give it that little extra pop and it really won't take long at all. So let's check out Selkie the dog. I just met Selkie in Texas and I took a couple of shots. Now it was a super bright scene. Um, the light was coming in in the early morning, but the background was extremely bright, white sky. And you can see the image on the left here is fairly flat. Again, I was shooting raw quality. On the right hand side is the final product that I ended up with. So let me show you how I got that. And I think you'll be surprised how easy it actually was. So let's go into development mode. I'm in library mode right now. So I'll just click the development button here. And I'll go click this button down on the bottom. You can see my mouse here on the bottom left. Now I'm gonna try to do this as best I can. So just try to follow along here. So the first thing I like to do in most cases is start with a crop because I don't want to be wasting time editing areas of the image that I'm going to crop out anyway. So I'm going to hit the R key, which is the shortcut for crop. And I figured most likely I was going to share this on Instagram or possibly print it fairly large. So I decided to go for a four by five crop aspect ratio and I would just drag it down like so and notice how I just eliminated that overexposed sky. Next, over here on the right, you can see there's something, there's like a chair in the background that's creeping in there. I'm just going to bring this over a little bit, like so, and you can get that rule of thirds pretty close to the eye. Then rotate the image just a little bit to add just that little bit more drama to the scene. And then I could bring it up on the bottom to just, just get it where it feels balanced to my eye. Somewhere right around there looks pretty good. So I'm just going to crop it there for now, and you can see already if I start here, you can go in the history on the left hand side and then go here, you can see the difference. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in here on the face and I notice that there's a little speck of something on the dog's fur there. I'm just gonna grab this tool here. It's called the spot removal tool. The shortcut is Q. I'm gonna click that tool and you can basically control the size and the feather. The feather is basically how soft the edge of the brush is. So default, how I have it right now, is looking pretty good. It's a little bit too big, so I'm just gonna drag that down a touch. And then I will click on this speck that's on the dog's fur, and it's basically telling you that it's gonna take a sample from over here and replace it with there. You know, replace the spot with there. That's really not a good spot, so I'm gonna move it over to the right, and then my opacity is set to 72. I'm just gonna drag that up to 100%. And now if you look, you can see I basically sampled this area and it's referencing the area to the right. So then when you pan off the image, you could see it's pretty much gone. But one other thing I do see is there's a little bit of gook there in the eye, so I can clean that up. Let me just make my brush a little bit smaller and I will just paint along like so. And notice where it's referencing. I'm gonna move the reference point to somewhere closer to the eye so it looks a little more realistic. And there we go, and I do see one more speck right there. It's very small, but I might as well hit it up. There's actually one right here by the nose. Grab that one quick. And one more right there. All right, so that's good. Now, let's close this out, and we will move down. I'll just zoom out here. Looking at the exposure, you could tell by the histogram up here on the top right that there's room for more there. So the dynamic range can be expanded. In other words, contrast can be increased. So you can do it a number of ways. You can drag the black slider down to create some contrast. 
you can just double click the word here and that'll bring it back or you can go down here to the tone curve I prefer using the tone curve and I usually throw on a medium contrast like so then I go up here and I can then modify so I'm gonna drag up the shadows a little bit to bring out some more of Sil Silky's detail there then I can drag the blacks down a little bit just to bring some more of that contrast back next thing I like to do in a photo like this I'm gonna add texture and that will bring much more detail up into the fur and it works really well you can also drag clarity up a little bit and that'll bring just a little bit more texture then I'm gonna drag the vibrance up and vibrance is really what brings in a lot of the, the uh, color on the dog's fur now I like the way the dog's fur looks but I don't like the green in the background so what I can do here is I can go down to the HSL slider go to saturation and then I can click the green and just drag that back that little bit you see that so now I just back the green off but I still got the saturation I was looking for in the fur you know that nice brown rich color next thing I want to do is I want to drag the sharpening up about 69 there and masking you can drag that masking in and that'll avoid sharpening some of the areas that you might not want sharpened the next thing you can do you can go to your profile if you want and you can enable the profile lens correction depending on what lens you're using and if you're shooting raw I was using the Sigma 56 millimeter so I'm gonna go in here and select that right here Sigma 56 and you can see there it just basically fixed the lens flaws in this particular case vignette it fixed and it also fixed some distortion but I actually like the vignette so I'm gonna bring some of that back in here if you go down to the effects area you can drag the amount down like so and then you can make the midpoint to you know smaller or larger like so and then you can feather it and I like a strong feathering so it looks a little bit more natural something like that and we are looking pretty good right there but one other thing I like to do that enhances the photo a little more is using the selective brush this will bring your images to the next level because this gives you localized adjustments so what I'm going to do is you click the brush here on the right and then if you double click the effect it'll just reset everything to zero so this effect word right here just double click that and anything that's adjusted here will reset so what I want to do is I want to raise the exposure up a little bit like so and then down here is your brush control you can change the amount of flow I'm gonna leave that at 47 and the size of the brush and the feather I'm gonna back the feather off a little bit and the size I'm gonna bring a little bit smaller and then I'm just gonna zoom in here to Selkie's face and I'm just gonna brighten her eyes a little bit and then I'm gonna zoom out and I'm just gonna brighten her face a little bit more like so Then I'm gonna make the brush a little bit smaller and I'm gonna brighten the little inside of her ears just that little bit and then I'm gonna you know just paint the fur just a little bit on the highlights to get a little more dimension in the fur and that's pretty much it so let me show you what this looks like before and after so as you can see pretty simple straightforward procedure here and you know I could just keep going for a long time and fine-tune this but the goal here is to just show you how to get more out of your photos relatively quick so let's move on to the next photo here is the next photo and this is a you know typical landscape scene I suppose I was in Texas visiting my nephew's new place and he had really cool setup and uh, you know but the lighting was pretty harsh it was flat it was like midday and you know there wasn't much dimension to the lighting because the, the sun was fairly high in the sky and uh, you know I was shooting raw again so the image was kind of flat skies kind of blown out so you can see the before and after is a just dramatic difference and this is very simple to do let me show you how I did this one I'm gonna hit the D key again to go into development mode alright so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a tone curve again like so I'm not gonna crop this image I'm just gonna leave the crop as is but I noticed the blacks I'm gonna to need to bring down a little bit so I'm gonna lower the blacks I'm using the histogram as a reference point there and highlights I'm gonna bring the highlights down to try to get a little more detail in that sky area like so next thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna drag the clarity up again texture give a little bit of texture and then the vibrance I'm gonna jack the vibrance up quite a bit and you can see I'm already starting to get 
to where the other image was. Not quite, but I'm getting there. As you can see, this is the final product, and this is where I'm at now, and this is where I started. So let me go back here. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to click this little rectangle up here, and what's, what this is called is a graduated filter. Very, very powerful tool, perfect for landscape photography. So again, you can click that tool and you can double click to reset the effect. So I'm going to double click it to reset the effect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the exposure down and you could always adjust this after the fact as well. So I'm just going to drag the exposure down and drag the clarity up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag and you can see what it did there. It basically creates this graduated filter that you can adjust. And if you grab these little bars, you can make it thin. So now you can see I have a thin adjustment line. See that? But if I, if I grab it, I can make it wider. I want it more wide so it's a more natural blend. And then I can align it, and you can rotate it as well. So I'm going to rotate it with the tree line, because that makes sense to me, something like that. And now that you have that there, you can f further adjust your filter if you want. So I can raise up the saturation a little bit more. I don't want to go too crazy. You can adjust the temperature. The highlights you can bring down a little bit, bring up. You can drag up the whites just that little bit to make it look a little more natural. I don't want to blow the highlights though, but somewhere right around there looks pretty good. Then I'm going to drag another graduated filter on the bottom. You can see the bottom of this image is really flat, so I'm going to drag in another one and drag up to get a little more drama in the scene and a little more layering. And that's looking pretty good right there. So if I close this, you can see if I show you a before and after. So, like I said, it's fairly simple. There's so, a lot of different tools here. There's many ways I could do this. I'm just trying to show you a couple of different tricks, various steps and ways on how to do it, so you can then apply it to your various photos. So let me show you one more here. So here's one of my nephew's F350 Super Duty Diesel. And this truck's badass. Uh, unbelievable power. This thing blew past us on the highway. Uh, apparently it's got some serious work done to it. But regardless, the image I took kind of sucks. The one on the left is just flat, dull. But, you know, the dynamic scene looks pretty cool, you know? The sky is cool, the angle is pretty cool, the truck looks impressive, you know? It's like that classic three-quarter shot with the wheel turned and all that. So let me show you how I did this. First thing you need to do with an image like this is drag the exposure up a little bit. It's underexposed due to all the white in the sky. So I'm going to drag the exposure up. Now you can do that by just clicking the histogram in the center here and dragging to the right. You can also just click the exposure bar and drag that to the right. It's up to you. One thing I see here that's a little bit annoying is there's a fence post that looks like it's coming out of the hood. So I'm going to go back to my spot removal tool and I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger like so. So you can see the inside of the brush is big enough to cover the entire object I'm trying to remove. So I'm going to click that, and it did a terrible job picking where it's cloning from. So I'm going to drag the option of where it's cloning from over to the hood. And I'll make it marry up here a little bit. Somewhere right about there looks pretty good. So let me close that. That's good enough for that. Now, what I wanted to show you next was vibrance. I'm going to drag the vibrance up to get a little saturation in there. That looks pretty good. Don't want to go too far. Clarity. I'm going to drag the clarity up. And I'm also going to drag the texture up. I really like the texture. It helps bring in some detail in the foreground as well. So, next thing I want to do is I want to drag some shadows. I need a little more information there on the bottom of the truck. I want, to want the tires and the suspension to show up a little bit more. And the highlights, I'm going to drag back just a little bit. They're not blown out, but they're getting pretty close. All right, so now what I'm looking at is pretty good, except the truck itself is still a little too dark. So the white of the truck is a little bit too dark. So a number of ways to address this. I personally like to use the adjustment brush. I'm going to go to the adjustment brush, and I'm just going to drag the exposure up. I'll drag it up about one full stop here, and I have my flow set to 50%. And I could actually make my feathering a little bit less. 
because I don't want it to bleed out too far. And I'm just going to paint the truck. And it's going to turn it from that gray to more of a white. Then you can change your brush size to fine tune where you're painting. Just get these pillars here. I don't really want to affect the windows though. Alright, so then I'm going to make my brush feathering a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to go over the front of the truck here a little bit. And I'll hit the side one more time. And then you can always go over here to the exposure and you can raise it up even more. See that? So you can adjust what you just did. So I'm going to drag it up a little bit more like so. And that's looking pretty good. Now to add just a little bit more drama, I'm going to create a new brush. So I'm just going to click this new button here. And I'm going to drag the exposure down one full stop. I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller and I'm going to paint over the grass going towards the truck. A couple of lines here. And that will just hit help to create some dimension in the scene. So I'm just basically drawing a few lines by lowering the exposure. I could jack up the saturation a little bit and jack up the clarity as well and then lower the exposure a little bit more and you can see what I did there. You see that? So it's just adding those a little bit of drama to, to help pull the eye in. Now, last thing I want to do, I didn't add a tone curve on this particular image. It didn't look like it needed it to me. So I'm going to go down here to sharpening and raise the sharpening up, raise the mask up a little bit. I already have the lens profile enabled. I was using the 16 to 50 millimeter. And now I'm just going to bring in a little vignette here just to help draw the eye in to the image. Something like that looks pretty good. And I might raise the vibrance up just a little bit more. And we're looking pretty good. So let me show you a before. You can see flat and dull. And then after. And voila. Alright guys, that is pretty much it for this Lightroom tutorial video, but stay tuned because I'm going to come out with another Lightroom tutorial video where I will go over some portrait editing. I have a bunch of pictures of Layla and Jace and my kids. I'll show you how, to, how you can enhance photos of your kids and, and things like that really easily and really give them some pop, you know, so if you want to share them on the web, Facebook, Instagram, family, friends, etc., you know, they'll be like, wow, what'd you do, you know, like, give you that little extra. So stay tuned for that. Please, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. It helps other people realize that it's a good video. And be sure to subscribe if you want more because there's more coming. Have a great day. I will catch up with you next time.